Okay, welcome to the next lesson. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the tow bar here itself, and we're going to be using these dimensions here to reproduce it as you see it. Now, when you first look at this, uh, probably the most important thing is to work out uh, an efficient plan of attack. Uh, and in this case, I would suggest that by drawing this profile here uh, on a plane or a work plane, after that has been drawn, we could then extrude it back to its depth of 75 to give us almost 99% of the shape. The last thing we need to do is to put this round on the front and a couple of holes through it. Now, um, these dimensions here give us lots of information about the overall shape of the tow bar, but they don't give us everything. So what we do is we start with what we know. So I'm going to start off by uh, drawing this profile here on the side of the tow bar in Creo. And I'm first going to start off with, I know that from this corner here without the round on it, so there's a square corner there, to this square corner here is a distance of 110. So over to Creo, usual thing, uh, you need to set your working directory and then create a new part. So this part for me is going to be called the tow bar to mix with the tow ball and turn our planes on and once again I'm going to draw it on a lateral or frontal plane and sketch. Okay start off with the known information so line tool draw myself a line that is a hundred whoops 110 millimeters in length set that up first of all good practice always to uh, draw what you know first up. That's 110. Back to PowerPoint. And now there's not a lot of information given to us about um, the rest of it, except that we have an angle here of 30 degrees between that line we just drew and this line here. So it doesn't give us the length of that line, but it does tell us from the very bottom of the tow bar to the very top edge of the tow bar is 56. So I'm going to put a line in that represents 30 degrees and then I'm going to put a line in parallel to this one. You can see the edge there and that edge there are parallel 56 millimeters away. So two things to do in Creo. So using line tool from this edge, click once, move it away around about 30 degree, degrees, I should say, click again Finish that by center mouse clicking. While you're still in that mode, um, if you do click on select, you'll notice that a um, dimension tool comes up. If you grab that, if I can do that, grab that, you can pull that sometimes to the other side, but it's not being very nice to me. So what I might need to do is just go to dimension, select that edge, select this edge, center mouse click, and it gives us our 30 degrees. Or oh, I could have done 150 over there, obviously. So type in 30 degrees, enter. And we now have a line running off at 30, but we don't know how long that is. Back to PowerPoint, we can see here that we do know the distance between this edge and this edge is 56. So it's not where that line there finishes, by the way, but let's put that information in, that's 56. So back to Creo, line tool, somewhere up here in space, I don't know yet exactly where it is, but I'm gonna draw myself a line, hopefully long enough. Oh, that's very long. Oops, make sure it doesn't snap or anything. We need to zoom in a bit on that. About there. Finish it off. And let's make sure the distance between the bottom edge and this top edge, edge is 56. Now, if it doesn't default to it, looks like we have got an 86 measurement there. So I'm just going to pull that out there so I can see what's going on. Change it to 56 hit enter. Now the important thing to realize here is is that edge does not intersect this edge here. Have a look at the PowerPoint. That edge we just drew does not, not intersect this 30 degrees there. So how do we get this internal corner here which will then reveal the distance of 85 from there to the end? Well if we look down to the far right hand side we notice that the thickness of the tow bar the plate that's made from is 16. So we can assume that 16 constant thickness all the way through. So if I was to draw another line parallel to this one that I just drew 16 millimeters below it, 
where that line intersects our 30 degree line must be that corner. So back to Creo, line tool, click once, extend it past, make sure the parallel line symbol appeared, let's finish it off, and make the distance between those two a distance of 16. Hit enter. Okay, now let's have a look. 110, 30 degrees, hitting that edge there. Let's have a look. 110, 30 degrees, now it's hitting that edge there. So we've now established that corner there. From that corner there to the very end is a distance of 85. So while we're there, let's put a line in from there to somewhere down here, a vertical line. So just draw a line in space. A distance of 85. Now if it doesn't come up straight away from there to there, what we might need to do now is use your delete segment tool and get rid of the bits of the line that we don't want. Then use your normal tool, your dimension tool, click on the point only, you can see the point highlights as I go close to it, click onto that line, center mouse click and the distance I think was 85. Let me just double check that back to PowerPoint, a distance, yes, of 85 from that corner to the very end. Okay, so we can see we've got the 30 degree line up here across, so we don't need this stuff out here, so let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this, and that's starting to clear up nicely. Okay, so to finish off that profile, we take that same um, knowledge that we had before that this bar remains 16 millimeters thick all the way through. So um, probably the easiest way is just to use your line tool and draw a line up there, um, 16. Or um, we might try using actually uh, an offset tool just to introduce it. If there's a line that I want to offset another one off, I select that line first, click up here to the offset tool. You see the arrows pointing down, wrong direction, so that means we need to type a negative in front, and the thickness was 16, hit enter. And you can see it's put it's offset that line up there, distance of 16. Close that. Now I could try using it here as well, um, but chances are it won't work because it's going to end up a bit short. So rather than muck around with the offset tool there, I'm going to just draw a line, not snapping it to anything, just free out here draw it across and then as you can see, oh that was lucky, actually that's rather freaky that actually did that, um, the two parallel line, symbol, parallel line symbols appear, in actual fact that's not going to quite work for me because I still want those parallel line symbols to appear. So what I might do there, I might just come over here and now you can see my parallel line symbols appear, finish that off, Put the dimension in between the two of them, 16 millimeters was our correct dimension, and then we're right. Now you'll notice that I'm always starting my line and finishing my line somewhere in space where it's not locking on a constraint to some way. Um, if you find yourself um, joining lines, um, then other dimensions will change. So it's a good practice to always start the line and finish the line not attached to anything when you're sort of in this construction phase. All right, so delete, let's get rid of this stuff. One, two, a bit more there. Where have we got an extra line there? Select tool, oh look at that, shade it in. And 110 by 16 by 16. That's got to be 16 because we use the offset tool. And now we're ready to extrude, I do believe. So select that. I always do that. Uh, if you are spinning things around and they disappear, just click on this icon down here which changes it to the center orbit when you use the center mouse button. And let's extrude this thing and let's do something a little bit forward thinking here. Rather than just extruding in one direction, we're going to use that plane to draw something with later on, I think. So hit the extrude button but this time select symmetrical about the work plane, so in either side, either way, and it's a distance of 75, so back to there, 75 it is, hit enter, 
and happy happy days good and then we've got three holes and a round on the front so you can do those holes positions that's easy one two and three you know so they're, they're two different sizes it's only really this round of 75 here on the front that may cause you um, some new challenges so a round of 75 on the front can't be applied to these corners oh, i'll show you what happens if i click onto this one and i hold control and i click this one go to the round tool and we type in 75 and enter we can see that it applies the round from the center or the origin of that point which doesn't work so we can't use the round tool so we have to draw some geometry that's going to represent an arc that originates along this center line and finishes um, tangential to the end of the actual um, plate here. So to do that, um, go to Creo, put a sketch up onto this top surface here, sketch onto there, and uh, let's start off by um, we need an arc which is going to be of a radius 75 diameter 3 um, 150 so i'm going to place my um, circle center somewhere over here around about where i think it should go and i'm going to s not snap this to anything at this point in time i'm just going to draw a circle about that big use your select tool and make that circle a radius of 75 which is a diameter of 150 remember that Creo always works in diameter now we need the edge of this circle to be tangent to this edge here so to do that I'm going to use some references so come to the top left corner click on reference and looks like we've got a reference to the middle as well which is good for that lateral plane so first of all i'm going to use my tangent tool so if i come up here to my constraints there's our tangent tool click on tangent click on the edge and then click on the edge of the circle we wish to become tangent with you'll see it moves the edge of the circle to become tangent to that the only other problem though is that we don't have the center of the circle in the um, center line there. So to fix that, uh, we use the what we call the coincident um, constraint. And we click on the center of the circle and then we click on the center line like so. And it now fixes or moves that um, so they're coincident. We now have a circle which will give us this arc here and this arc here. But we don't want to remove uh, internally we want to remove this external part here so to finish that off just simply grow a line and draw yourself a sort of random shape like so delete the parts that we don't need and select yes it's all lovely shaped click OK and then of course extrude and cut and that's interesting something weird going on there let's see what happens there okay something strange went on there let's see what happened what happened there let's go back to my ex I'll just delete that extrusion and I'll go back to my sketch edit definition checking that again click on no, there's no overlapping geometry. There's no exposed. There's none of those. Okay, the only thing I can think of here is that um, this arc here, because it's tangent with that edge of that surface, it's really not the maths processor is not enjoying that there. I'm going to go one more go. I've got a funny feeling it just doesn't like it because it's that's tangential to that face there it sort of doesn't know whether to cut it or not so let's uh, try that again uh, where were we extrude uh, and let's cut it doesn't look very nice oh there we go it worked that time who knows why but it did okay cool and then you can put those holes onto that surface 
Um, oh, I might as well do that as well. There, I'll show you a different way of putting holes in rather than drawing circles. If we select the surface, and normally you'd go sketch and draw some circles, you can use a tool called the hole tool, uh, which is up here. Click on hole, uh, I'll spin around a little bit. And to position the holes, all you do is grab these green handles and move them to um, a plane or an edge or a face that gives you a reference. So I'm going to click one to there, one to there. And the distance would have been half of 75. So this is kind of cool. We can do the old 75 forward slash 2. And the diameter of the hole, I think, were 16. Sounds familiar. Enter. And the distance in from the end. We'll better check that out. I forgot what that is. Okay, it looks like we've got 25 from the end and another 50. They were 16 and a half of 75. So 25 and 50, remember that. So this distance here from the end needs to be 25. And we don't really worry about the rest of it. We can see up here that it's just a simple hole. Create a simple hole. Diameter of 16, through it goes. Click OK. And you can then put another one here. Do the same thing. Hole. Snap it to there. Snap it to the end would be a good idea. And that would be 75. That will be, once again, we can do the 75 forward slash 2. And happy days. Good. And then, of course, you can put the hole there and then to finish that off at your own leisure. Okay, so get stuck into that. A um, couple little tricky parts there.